Hey everyone, it's Paul Grossman, the Dark Arts Wizard, and I want to remind you that Joe Colantonio's Automation Guild Conference is coming up January 8th through the 10th. A bunch of great speakers like Gil Tayer, Leo Lanskin, all have pre-recorded hour-long sessions that you get to watch before the conference, and on these dates, you actually got to interact with us live during a Q&A. Tuesday, we've got Mark Winteringham, Ash Coleman, Paul Grizzafi is going to be there talking about his presentations, and even Karina Pimp, Mark Fink, and Michelle Z. I'll even be there showing you some of the dark arts of functional testing. If you happen to have missed the conference, it's actually not too late. You still get to see all the pre-recorded videos, and the Q&A session gets pre-recorded, and then you get access to that as well. Now, back to the test combinations generator in UFT. Let's say your requirement is that you need to generate uh, 10 random rolls of a single die. This is the code that will do it, and you run it, and that will output, well, 10 random rolls of a single die. But let's say you've got your project, and it worked out really well. <clears throat> All these random numbers is really exactly what they needed. And you know what's going to happen then? They're going to ask you for, hey, I need to have some random dates. And while you're trying to figure out that, they're going to say, do you want random numbers? We need random names. We need random cities and passwords, emails, URLs, even random part numbers. How are you going to be able to write all the code to support building that sort of data? Well, you don't need to. Because inside of Unified Functional Testing, there's a brand new little tool that nobody's talking about. It is the hidden little secret that's just been added into 14.0. And that is the test combinations generator. Check this out. Let's say I need to generate a bunch of random dates. I'm going to just double click on the dates and go down here and select. You can see that everything's out there. Dates. You can set whatever date you want. You can set the format of the date that you're having coming back. I'm going to go and generate 10 of these random dates. There we go. Well, of course, we can do numbers. But that's easy peasy. So let's take a look at them, and I'm going to go to my numbers list over here, any range, 0 to 100, generate 10 of those. Let's get that. How about names? Did you need a first name? Did you need a last name? Did you need a combination of both, a full name? Let's do five of these names and generate them. There's some nicely named people right there. You know what? I need to have some non-English names as well. I need five of those. Cool. And in different languages. How about passwords? We're going to create some random passwords. Check this out. This is a regular expression pattern that you can use. And you can modify it. Change it if you want to. Uh, make it uh, make that nine over there in order to create all, all different types of, of um, random passwords. Let's generate these guys out here. And there you go. A whole bunch of nice, interesting passwords. This tells you what characters to use. If uh, you need to exclude one, hey, we can't support the hashtag. Take it out. And then generate your passwords again. Just hit highlight and hit the delete key and generate again. There you go. No more hashtags. It's a really good way to learn how regular expressions work. Remember how we learned when we were writing code? Yeah, we grabbed somebody else's code and we started messing with it. That's exactly the way you get to learn regular expressions with this tool. A little side benefit out of that. Neat. What else we have? Random cities. All right, let's take a look at our cities. Uh, let's do our city list. Oh, you know, there's that regex in there. You know, I don't want it's just any old city. I only want cities that start with the letter Z. So I'm going to generate that. There's your city starting with Z. I'm sorry. Uh, my mistake. I didn't want cities that started with Z. I wanted the cities that ended with Z. So I'm going to do Z and the dollar sign like that. There you go. whole bunch of cities that end in the letter Z. Let's move on to, well, there's emails. You can do that. All right. There's emails. We can uh, actually use existing domains. And these should look like these are real domains that are out there. Or if you want to fake up the domains, uh, your, uh, maybe your system is actually sending emails out to people and you don't want to bother those domains, you can go out there and generate the domains to random ones. Let's go generate some, some URLs over here. There's our regular expression again. Generate 10 of those. 
And now we've got a URL that we can test against our system to make sure that they are good. These URLs probably should not start with just the letter S. Yeah, it's probably going to be a bad one. Look at this. This is all happy path. All this stuff are happy path ones. This one is our error path. We can mark them out, separate them out as being our good ones and our bad ones. We can do MAC addresses, generate those. There you go. How about IP addresses? There's some nice little randomly generated IP addresses. And finally, we've got a part number. Well, the part number, we can use a regular expression of our own once we figure it out. Let's see, I need to have part number that starts with A, B, C, or D. I generate that. You know, I only got one out of there. Uh, that's because my regular expression only generates one character out of that. What I want to do is have a combination of these four characters. Generate. And I was defaulted to, to one. I'm going to go over to 100. We're going to create 100 of those. It only creates four. A, B, C, and D. All right. I need to have a part number with a dash and a number. And I'm going to create 100 of those. Generate. And what do I get? Look at that. Every com A bunch of combinations up to 100. That and it used every combination up there because it's zero through nine and A, B, C, and D. It actually ran out, so there's only 40 combinations that you can make out of that particular uh, regular expression. Keep in mind about that one that's an error. Starts with an S, ends in a Q. Let's go take a look at some combinations. Combine all this data together. Our initial combinations are done in pairwise. Be, which means that we don't compare every single column data with every other piece of column data. And you know why? Because that would be just freaking too big for us to really process. We'd probably be running for a year before we got through all those iterations. But you do get a pretty good combination, even if with this number of items, you get 493 combinations that you can compare back and forth to. Oh, remember we set that one item to an error path? Well, these are the good error, the permutations. These are the known good ones. And over here are the error paths. These have that one column that was listed as being bad with the S and the Q at the end there. Okay, last thing. We need to go and save this off somewhere. So this is the bad data over here. And we're going to hit generate on that. And if we go back over and look at our drop-down list, now we've got, well, from doing this demo a couple of times, a whole bunch of different types of data that we can load in at any given time. Oh, there's one more place that you can actually pull data from. Let's take a look at pulling something from a field that's got some months listed into it. I'm going to go back over to our test combinations generator and go and select month and go pull from UI. Click on this button over here. Here's Spotify wants to know what month I might be born in. And from there, it's got all the months that are in that particular list. Yep, there they are. And we could either randomly generate from the pulled, uh, pulled values. And there's only 13 items there. So I'm going to go and hit Generate, and there's my month. And they're all randomly selected out there, including the default value, which was listed at the top, which would have been month, just to allow the user to know that they're supposed to select a month. Well, that's some pretty cool innovation. And if you're wondering where that's being driven from, well, it's kind of my opinion that it's coming from open source tools. I mean, take a look at Tech Beacon. They just had an article out there, the state of test automation tools for trends of 2018. And it's because of Selenium that commercial tool vendors are adding more functionality and touting more ease of use than their open source competitor. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. And remember, I'm Paul Grossman, the Dark Arts Wizard up on Twitter. I hope you have a great day.